In this video, I want to provide an example as to how you can use conditional probabilities to help derive useful results. And the example we're going to be talking about here is the example of breast cancer mammography, the test for whether or not an individual actually has breast cancer. So what we're told, and these figures are relatively accurate, is that the probability that an individual, a uh, 40 to 50 year old woman chosen at random from the population the probability that they do actually have breast cancer is something like 1 over 100. Um, I've made these figures a little bit simpler than they actually are to work with, but it's not too far off that particular figure. And because of that, we know that this implies that the probability that an individual uh, woman chosen from this sort of population of 40 to 50 year old women, the probability she, that she doesn't have cancer is therefore 99 out of 100, so 99%. Furthermore, we're told that the probability that an individual tests positive under uh, having a mammogram, given that they actually do have cancer, is about 90%. So that's 90 over 100. So it's pretty accurate at testing for cancer if an individual does have cancer. Finally, we're told that the probability that an individual woman chosen at random from this 40 to 50 year old woman population, the probability that that she tests positive given that she doesn't have cancer, we're told is something like 8%, so it's 8 out of 100. So we've got all these things, but what we're actually interested in is given that an individual tests positive, so we're sort of a doctor and we're advising an individual woman who has actually tested positive, what is actually the probability that they do have cancer? So what we're really interested in finding is what is the probability that an individual has cancer given that they've tested positive. And we already know how to go about sort of working this out. We know from the previous video that this is given by the probability that an individual has cancer and they test positive, so the joint probability of having cancer and testing positive, divided through by the probability that an individual actually tests positive. If we work at each of these things in turn, we can start off with a numerator we know that we're already told in the question rather, or we're already told in terms of statistics, that the probability that an individual tests positive, given that they do have cancer, is equal to the probability of an individual testing positive and having cancer, divided through by the probability of that individual actually having cancer, which we can easily rearrange to help us get the numerator of this expression, the second expression here, which is actually exactly the same as the numerator of this expression over here because the order doesn't matter in terms of the joint probabilities. So then what we get is that the probability that an individual has cancer and they test positive is actually just given by the product of the probability that an individual tests positive given that they do have cancer times the probability that an individual has cancer, both of which we know. We know this first thing, it's just 90 out of 100 it's just this up here. Um, and we know the second thing as well, which is the probability that an individual actually has cancer, which is just 1 over 100. So putting these two things together, we get that the probability that an individual uh, jointly has cancer and tests positive as something like 9 over 1,000. OK, so that's the numerator. How do we work out the denominator? Well, the denominator is a little bit more involved. So working out the probability that an individual tests positive but it's not that much more involved because we already know our rule for calculating marginal probabilities because that's exactly what the denominator is here. So in order to get the probability of an individual test positive, all we need to do is we need to sum over all particular cases of the joint probability, and I'm using x here to denote the cancer status of an individual and the fact that they test positive. So it's this joint probability here and sort of writing this out in simple form, this is just the same as the probability that an individual has cancer and tests positive, which we already know, plus the probability that an individual doesn't have cancer and tests positive. So we already know this part of the expression, it's just 9 over 1000. The next thing we have to work out is this sort of second half of the expression here. So in order to work out this sort of expression here, what we need to do is we need to think about using this latter bit of information here. So what we can do is we can work out what is the probability that an individual tests positive given that they don't have cancer, 
that's just equal to, we know from our sort of rule here, that this is equal to the probability that an individual tests positive and they don't have cancer, the joint probability, divided through by the probability that an individual doesn't have cancer. And if we sort of rearrange this expression, that finally is going to give us something which is going to be the probability that an individual tests positive and they don't have cancer is equal to the probability that an individual tests positive, given that they don't have cancer, times the probability that they don't have cancer. Both of which of these two things we know, this is just 8 over 100 times the probability that they don't have cancer, which is 99 over 100, which if you put both of these things together, this actually comes out as an expression as 792 over 10,000. In the next video, we're going to finish off this particular question, and we're also going to talk about the intuition for the particular result.